talk to you about the Doctor of Education program. Um, by now, I just wanted to tell you about my credentials. I have a Bachelor's of Science in Family and Consumer Sciences that I got in 2005. And then I have a Master's of Science in Instructional Technology in 2015. I received that. And then in May 2019, I just received my second Master's in Education. And the biggest question that I've been asking myself in my mind is, should I go back to school to finish out this last degree and get my doctorate of education? So I know, they're like, what is all this education? What are you trying to do? I know I'm asking myself that same question, okay? Um, at the end of the day, what I think I want to really convey to you today is the challenges. And I guess this video is about if you are this way, maybe it's not time, okay, for you to get a doctor. Well, first, if you're unorganized in your everyday life, if you're not eating a good breakfast, if you're not doing your lesson plans for school, like, two weeks ahead of time and, like, super, super prepared, you may not want to enter into the Doctor of Education program. If you are a procrastinator, like me, you may not want to enter into the Doctor of Education program. And if you are also at home with little small children, that's really, they really love you. They really love you, but they need you and they need your time. You may not want to get into the Doctor of Education program. And you're like, why? But why? Because it's time consuming. You will have to take the next three years, think about it, three years, to really, really dig into education. Dig into the thing you're doing every day in order to become a doctor of it. And you have to be super, super organized. Eat a great breakfast in the morning. Organize your, your units like months ahead of time um, schedule for that have the schedule for when you get home to actually do the work the coursework um, once I finished this last master's I realized that I as in me Mrs. Delmo I didn't have any more brain space for education like some of my courses for this master's degree were actually in class. Like, I was sitting there in class for another master's. And I'm sitting there with, like, kids that was in undergraduate school. And I'm like, oh, baby. Oh, uh -huh. the way I'm set up, this is too much for me. Like, I just really was not prepared to be sitting in nobody's classroom. And typically, most of these doctors of education programs, they are actually online. So, it's not so bad. But the coursework, the requirements are bananas. Like, you have to really look into the actual coursework. And you're going to realize, like, whoa, I can't have anything going on outside of this. And if you're a turn-up girl, mm -mm, trying to get it in, if you have, like, a needy little little kids running around the house, if you are, like, teaching all subjects. Now, if you kind of, <clears throat> like, teaching one subject, you probably can get away with that. But teaching all subjects, you know, I teach elementary school. If you're teaching all subjects, you might want to kind of pace yourself, Miss Mel, or Mr. Sir. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to be a lot. So, at the end of the day, I do want to get my um, doctorate. And everybody's like, why? And I'm like, to be honest with you, I long to be Dr. Del Moro. I, I long to be doctor. And at the end of the day, um, I just feel like as in, I must personally say as an African-American woman, we, don't not have, we do not have a lot, lot of doctorates of education running around here. And one thing that really influenced me is for our, at our school, we had a Black History in my program. And they had this awesome lady. I forgot her name, but if I get it, I'll let you guys know. But um, she had her doctorate of education. She had a master's. She 
was the first uh, part of these things. She was kind of like trailblazing. And I'm like really into trailblazing. I'm really into forward thinking and what's next. And okay, how can we figure out what the next generation will want from our generation? Like that's just me. That's just who I am. But at the end of the day, I think the credentials go in when you become doctor. They respect that doctor. They always think that doctor is the doctor of the sick. But when they were asking the kids in the audience, like, what do you, what do you take from this? They were like, I really thought like they were just doctors of the sick. And they didn't realize that they were actually doctors of education. Like professors typically have their doctors. And I'm like, wow, like my kids really didn't know that. And I'm like, I would want to be in the elementary classroom as Dr. Sutton. Now, am I ready for that? According to my little tips, uh, I'm not ready. But according to my heart and with the future host, who knows? Well, I'm not going to take up all your time on this video. I just want you guys to know that it does require a lot of extra time that, to be honest with you, I don't have. But if you do have it, go for it. I really encourage you to just... Just think sky's the limit for all your dreams. And if you can financially afford it, if you're trying to look for financial aid, <coughs> cancel. <laughs> uh, Sally may not pay for documents like that unless you go and get some type of grants and scholarships and go on these cohorts and stuff like that. However, if you're going on your own without all that research and background, I tell you to slow down. Research. Find the best school. See what you can afford. See what your district can do for you. See what your school can do for you. Find all these resources resources first because it's costly. Okay? Real costly. All right? So at the end of the day, I just want to thank you for listening to me. I encourage everyone to go after all their educational needs. Like I said, I'm a big proponent on getting that brain right. So at the end of the day, thank you. Come live from the juice box. Have a good night.